on YouTube. Welcome back to Sense of South Jersey with me, Kellen, for another fragrance review. Guys, I finally did it. I finally repurchased this fragrance. Uh, the one we're going to be taking a look at today is uh, an aromatic green fragrance from 1993 from the house of Emmanuel Angaro. It is Emmanuel Angaro Pour la Homme. Three or Angara Poila Ohm Three, however you want to say it. I have a little bit of a history with this fragrance, and if you've been subscribed to the channel for a long time, I'm sure you'll remember a video I did about probably about two years ago when I got a vintage version of the fragrance. So now I'm finally revisiting it. As usual, we'll break down the fragrance into five parts. First, taking a look at the box and the bottle presentation. Then I'll list the notes and talk about which ones I noticed the most. And then I'll talk about its performance in terms of how long I notice it lasting on me. And then I'll give it my overall thoughts. And then, of course, my overall rating. As usual, if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already and check out the Sense of South Jersey Instagram page for news and updates on the channel. But let's take a look at Angaro Poila Ohm 3. Let's start things off with the presentation. Taking a look at the box, black and gold lettering here. It says Angaro Poila Ohm and then the three Roman numerals. It's a 100 ml bottle. You got nothing on the top, nothing on the sides. On the bottom you have a barcode and what looks like a batch code stamped in there. No need to read it. And pretty simple box here. On the back, you got some brand information. This is made in Italy. Um, the bottle is actually pretty cool. It's kind of flashy, stands out, really shiny black. It will have a lot of fingerprints if you I can't notice it already. And you got the three gold Roman numerals there. And it's 100 ml, nothing on the sides of the back. And on the bottom, you do have what looks like a sticker where they have the batch code listed again. This is a newer bottle. I got it from Fragrance X. Um, the cap, it does, you can hold it by the cap. It kind of has these grooves around the atomizer here where you can see it. And it you know just twists on there and it'll stay in place. Kind of a kind of a pretty heavy duty feeling bottle. So we'll spray some on here so you can see the distribution. Pretty decent atomizer and pretty simple but decent presentation for the fragrance. Okay, so the note breakdown for Angaro Porla Ohm 3. In the top, you have vodka, lavender, coriander, sage orange, mahogany, and lemon. And then in the heart of the fragrance, in the middle, you have rose, geranium, jasmine, lily of the valley. And then in the base, you have sandalwood, patchouli, vetiver, oak moss, cedar, and musk. So, you know, surprisingly, since it's a fragrance from 1993, usually those are just kind of cousins of the 80s fragrances where they're going to have a lot of notes. That doesn't have nearly as many as I thought initially when I looked it up. Um, the ones that I can get, I definitely don't get any vodka. I, I mean, I don't even know what that would smell like in a fragrance. I, you know, I sprayed some on my hand like rubbing alcohol. I don't get that. I get, I do get a little bit of citrus. So whatever the orange and lemon notes combination, you know, does come through for me. Um, I get a little bit of floral and then, you know, I guess some sandalwood that I get a little bit of that in the end. The other notes I really can't detect and pick up, but those are the ones that I feel are most prominent in this fragrance. Okay. So as far as the performance goes for this scent, um, uh, at max, I'm noticing it on myself where I can still smell it between like four and five hours. So say we'll average that at four and a half hours. I think it's most strong in the first hour. That's where it's going to project. And then, you know, I do get whiffs of it in that four and a half, five hour span, but nothing more than that. It definitely won't last a, you know, a full eight hours or a work day. Um, however, I don't really see this as something that you'd wear to the office, uh, in terms of like a work scent, but I always judge that on, will it get me at least eight hours? That's kind of like my standard for judging performance. And this one falls short at around four and a half, five hours. Okay, so now for my overall thoughts on the fragrance Angaro Porla Ohm 3. Let me tell you guys about the history of me and this scent, right? So some of you may know, some of you may not. So I'm gonna go over it real quick again. I got this scent two years ago. I bought it on eBay vintage version, right? The box and the bottle look different. The cap was like red. I think the bottle was still black. I don't really remember, but the box looked way different. It actually looked really more 80s. It looked a lot cooler than it does now. Um, although this is okay. And I had never gotten the fragrance before. Everybody hyped it up as an awesome barbershop classic, masculine type of scent, like right up my alley. So I got it. I open it up. You know, it's in cellophane. It's sealed. I open it up and I spray it and it smelled horrible. And I just couldn't believe like this is something that somebody would wear. This is something that smells good to somebody. Later on, I kind of figured out after I put the review up that it had gone bad. However, I had never smelled a sour fragrance before, at least from what I knew, known, you know. So I didn't know that. I didn't think that that would have happened. Plus, it was in cellophane, so I assumed it was okay. But it had still gone bad. And everyone was like, ah, oh, you got a bad bottle. The juice went, it turned or whatever. You have to try it again. And I put it off for a long time. People keep saying, you got to try it again. You gave that one a bad rap. You have to try it. So the other day I got some fragrances from Fragrance X and I threw this in here because it was, I think with, after the coupon, like 18 or 20 bucks, it was really, really cheap. So, um, I got it. I opened it. I sprayed it on. I'll put some on again. You know, I, I smelled the fragrance. And I initially liked it. I'm like, oh, this is actually pretty good. But something was like, God, this smells super familiar. And then it hit me what this smells like. And then I went and looked it up on Fragrantica. And this is what it's compared to. Safari by Ralph Lauren. It, it's almost dead on the same scent, except this is just better. 
Like, I was sort of disappointed when I figured that out. Like, this one smells all so much like it, but more of like a manufactured version or synthetic version. Like, this has a stronger leather and green vibe, where this sort of has that, but not to the extent to where it smells as realistic as this. And, you know, it's just funny. Like, if you can paint a picture of how to describe these two, right? Like, just say they're cousins, right? Safari owns a nightclub. This guy works at the nightclub. He's like a club promoter. His job is to get 21-year-olds to buy bottle service and, you know, tables. And then he gets a commission. But all the money really goes to Safari because he owns the nightclub. And he's at home with a girl who happens to be this guy's girlfriend who cheats on him because this one is way better. So the bottom line is, is this is much better than, than this one. So I was actually really disappointed when I finally got this in. Now, it's not a bad scent, you know, it's just that like when you look at it, it looks like it's the cornier version. Like this is a classy looking bottle. This is cool. It sort of has a flashy jewelry. I like black and gold, obviously, but the scent in here is like, just get Safari. You know what I mean? Just get Ralph Lauren Safari. This stuff I think is is mediocre at best. I'm not really that impressed with it. It's not bad. I think it's it's a safe wear, definitely nighttime. I would wear it to a nightclub um, and it, it's good for that. But performance wise, this is better. But if you only want to have one and you don't want to spend a lot of money, get this. Not that this is that expensive, but it's definitely a cost more than, than this stuff does. So this is a good cheap alternative. However, this is not that much more to where you're spending hundreds of dollars more. I don't know what this runs anymore, like 70 bucks maybe. I would get Safari. This stuff is uh, sort of fell short for me in that regard. Um, it's just not really anything that it's cracked up to be. So I don't know, maybe the vintage was better. However, I'm never going to seek out the vintage because there's no point. Um, I have Safari and this stuff is, is okay, but it's, it's, it's so close to Safari, just not as good. You know what I mean? There's nothing that great about it to where I'm going to rant and say, oh, this is a must have. It's just not that different from Safari at all. So it sort of falls short for there. Um, again, I would say nighttime, you know, twenties probably could rock this. This is a good, you know, it's an okay scent for, for someone who's never tried any other scents, or if you only have one or two, this is a good fragrance. Um, it's not the worst thing I've ever smelled in the world, but however, it's it's nothing special. And I think if I had to pick one, I would always pick Safari by Ralph Lauren all day. Okay, so now it's time for my overall ratings for Angaro Pour La Homme 3. Taking a look at the presentation again. It's okay, you know, kind of a cheap box bottle. So all right, I, I think it's a cool looking. I like the black and gold scheme. I like how it's kind of heavy in here. It's got a good distribution, heavy top here, uh, you know, where the atomizer sits. So we'll give it a six and a half out of 10 for presentation. As far as the performance goes, it's going to be a five out of 10. I think max I'm getting five hours. So five out of 10 for performance. And then the scent overall is, again, it's not terrible. It smells good, but it's so close to Safari and it's so obvious that it's a clone and or impression or they just sampled because this came out in 93 and this came out in 92. Like, come on. It, it, I think it's obvious that that's what they did um, and they just kind of made a, you know, a less expensive alternative, which is okay, but it's not that great and I don't think it's anything special. And after all the hype and the length of time between when I bought that sour bottle to this and everyone, how, everyone telling me how good it was, I'm left a little disappointed. So the scent's going to get Get a uh, five out of ten, and the overall rating is going to be a five and a half out of ten for Angara Polo Home Three. All right, guys, that'll wrap it up for me. That's my review, finally, again, of the current formulation of Angaro Pueblo Home 3 by Emmanuel Angaro. I would love to hear from you guys in the comments section. What do you think of this scent? Do you think I was too harsh on it? Is the vintage that much better? Please tell me. Um, I would love to hear some feedback from all of you guys, and you know I always appreciate all the interaction. Thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me today, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care.